Hello, welcome to the Thursday, February 7th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Earth Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Google released its monthly update for Android and among the vulnerabilities being addressed here, there are three that sort of stick out and Google actually also points them out in its advisory CVE 2019, 1986, 87 and 87. 88. These vulnerabilities affect what they are calling the framework, the basic libraries that are coming uh, with Android and in particularly how PNGs are being displayed. Apparently due to these vulnerabilities, it is possible to execute arbitrary code on an Android phone if you are viewing a malicious PNG. Since this is the basic PNG rendering library, this affects any software on Android that does display PNGs. So this uh, could be exploited via SMS, uh, via email and via a uh, web browser. So as usual, make sure that you upgrade quickly. This affects Android 7, 8 and 9. And talking about vulnerabilities in graphics libraries, Google's Project Zero has a real neat blog post by Ivan Fratrick where he goes into quite a bit of details in a vulnerability that was recently discovered in the Skia graphics library. Now, Skia, you may not have heard of it before. I haven't had heard of it, but apparently this, the library being used by browsers, for example, Chrome, Firefox, also Android uses this library. So a vulnerability in the Skia library certainly could have quite substantial impact. Now, the neat thing about the blog post is that it really goes in depth into some of the algorithms being used to draw different polygons and what kind of memory corruption issues can show up if this is not done right. So great blog post, uh, but sadly a little bit too complex and too much uh, to really do it justice here in the podcast. So I'll just uh, refer you to the show notes for details. And Google with Google Chrome is jumping on the bandwagon of notifying users if their passwords have been leaked in the past. Of course, Firefox has released uh, that as part of Firefox a while ago. For Google Chrome, it's an extension that you have to install, so it's not happening automatically. And it doesn't appear to be using the Have I Been Pwned database, but something that Google created itself. Now, the question that always comes up uh, with uh, these systems, these plugins and APIs is in particular with a company like Google that is sort of the crosshairs of uh, privacy advocates. Well, uh, do I actually leak my password to Google if I'm using a system like this? The quick answer is no, and it actually does do the lookup in, I think, a pretty good way. It's the same way that Have I Been Pwned has used for a while now. What they're doing is they're not just sending the password or even a hash of the password to the site. Instead, what they're doing is they're just sending a partial hash, the first couple bytes of the hash to the site, and then they retrieve a list of all the hashes that start with those two, three, or however many bytes. So then it's up to the browser to receive that list of hashes and look up whether or not any of these hashes matches the password that the user entered. Now, of course, if you don't believe that this is really what's happening, well, uh, that's uh, what the browser's debug features are for. And uh, hopefully Google didn't misrepresent what it's doing here. Google also states that they're using the Argon 2 hash, which is sort of the latest, uh, greatest hashing algorithm out there. But of course, the big, big deal here is that they're not sending the entire hash. Even with Argon 2, if they have a hash of the password, well, they know your password. Well, if you wonder what the latest uh, mal spam is about that you receive in particular with Excel spreadsheets as an attachment, uh, Brad has a write-up about what Hankitor is up to. Hankitor 
is the particular mail spam family that lately is sending out Excel spreadsheets. So if you received any of them, in particular sort of the hello fax, uh, basically the fake uh, incoming fax messages, well, take a look at Brad's blog post. You already did the analysis for you and as usual with packet captures and indicators of compromise. And we do have a winner for last month's uh, Raspberry Pi challenge. Uh, Tor won uh, the challenge. And uh, the only problem I had was he lives in Norway, had a real hard time finding a way to send him the Raspberry Pi. So he agreed to just make a donation to Kids on Computers instead. For February, we'll do something a little bit uh, different in the way that it's uh, not just about the podcast, but if you find errors, if you have any suggestions about the website or the podcast or any of the data we offer, uh, send a message via the contact form. And in the subject that you can enter there, uh, please just uh, note the word podcast or so. So at the end of February, if I go through them, that I'll have an easier time to find uh, entries for it. Also, I still offer free stickers uh, to be mailed out. Uh, You just have to find the application form on the site. Now, I'll only do that uh, for the remainder of February, March. I'll be on the road most of the time, so I'll have a hard time shipping them out, which is, well, I'll at least temporarily for a couple of months probably suspend sending out free stickers. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.